Look at all this stuff. What was this one for? Hmm. An ASP zero one. One of these days, I should do something with this. Acha, where's my frock? Oh, I forgot. It's still in the washing machine. Oh no, it will stink. I forgot to take the clothes from the washer again. This is an ongoing problem at home. So I plan to build a little device that monitors the washer and sends me a notification when it's done. So here is a plan. I have an ESP01 with some sensor attached to the washer. It detects the state of the washer and sends that information to my home assistant instance. Home Assistant, if you're not familiar with it, is a very cool open source home automation solution that you can install into something like a Raspberry Pi and do all sorts of cool automations. In this case, I'll have an automation that detects when the washer is complete and then announces it through the Amazon Echo and Google Home devices across the house. So how do you detect when the washer is done? It's a pretty old washer and I don't want to do a tear down and poke inside if I can avoid it. It shows this word end in this seven segment display, but it's, you know, really very dim and almost impossible to make the ESP read it. It does shake a lot and makes noises when it's operating. So maybe that's something that we could look at. How do you sense these vibrations? How about an accelerometer? When the washer vibrates, it is moving a tiny bit from side to side. I'm hoping an accelerometer stuck to its body can read these movements. I have a couple of these MPU 6050s lying around. It's a very popular accelerometer sensor. It can measure acceleration along the X, Y and Z axis among other things. It has an inbuilt processor that does the necessary computations and provide us with the readings through I squared C. Let's make a quick little prototype on a breadboard. Okay, so I have hooked up the MPU6050 based on its datasheet and connected its I2C pins to the ESP01. Usually at this point, we open up Arduino IDE and start writing some I2C code to read from the MPU6050. But there is a framework I have been using for the last couple of months called ESP Home. It's a fantastic tool to quickly generate code for something like this. This is the ESP Home configuration file. It's in a YAML format and is divided into multiple sections. We start with the ESP home section where we specify some basic information like the name of the node, the platform and the type of the board. The Wi-Fi section uh, has all the Wi-Fi configuration. I've set the log level to debug so that we can see additional information in the logs. The API section enables the Home Assistant API. This allows us to uh, read uh, the sensor readings programmatically from something like a Python script. OTA updates enables us to update the firmware over Wi-Fi. In the I2C section, we configure which pins are SDA and SCL. And the sensor section is where we configure all the various sensors that are attached to this ESP Home device. So in our case, uh, it's the MPU 6050. Update interval uh, determines how frequently ESP Home queries the sensor for new readings. A platform can contain multiple sensors, but we are only interested in the accelerometer reading. So I specify only those sensors here. Let's upload the code to ESP and see what happens. I did upload the codes once before for testing, so we now have the over-the-air upload option. 
Once a code is uploaded and the ESP reboots, ESP Home shows the logs from the device. Everything seems to be working and we are able to read the acceleration from the MPU 6050. It's really hard to make sense of these values from the log. So I put together a little Python script to read the sensor values using the ESP Home API and output it as comma separated values. If I run the script, you can see the sensor readings coming through. Let's try plotting this data using Jupyter. Here is some Python code that I wrote to load the CSV data into a pandas data frame. As you can see, the code is trying to read the data from a file named test1.csv. So we need to dump the data from ESP home into this particular file. Let's keep the script running for a bit so that we have enough data points to plot. Let me run this code. Now, this is a lot more intuitive. If I bang on the desk and rerun the code, yay, it is picking up the spikes. Great. The z-axis values seem to hover around 9, but the other two are closer together. Let's drop the z-axis for now and zoom in on the other two axes. This looks better for our analysis. How about if I just tap on the desk? That shows up as smaller spikes. Hmm, nice. Let's try something for fun. I'll put the MPU 6050 over my phone and try to change the vibration modes on the phone. Hmm, great. The MPU 6050 is able to pick up these vibrations as well. Now that we have tested the theory, let's build the hardware for this project. Grab a piece of puff board and solder a 2x4 female header to it. This will hold the ESP01. I used some enamel copper wire to solder the MPU6050 breakout board to the puff board. Connect the pins of the ESP01 and MPU6050 using copper wire. It was too tall to fit into the small pill box I had lying around. So I went ahead and trimmed the pins of the ESP to make it fit. That seemed to do the trick. I want this to be powered from a 5V USB power supply. But the ESP works at 3.3V. So we need to add a 3.3V step down regulator. I made a hole in the box for the wires that goes to the power supply. I used a little bit of hot glue to stick it to the box. It is a really small and compact unit. That's why I like the ESP01 over some of the other ESP8266 variants. I've provided links to all the components I used and a circuit diagram in the description section below the video. I have attached the device to the body of the washer using some tape. These were the values captured over a period of 5 minutes while the washer was idle. It is way too noisy for it to be usable as it is. Also, it recorded almost 7000 values over this 5 minute period. <clears throat> it is inefficient to send that much data over Wi-Fi. Um, so we have to aggregate the values over a period of time and perhaps send this aggregate value every few seconds. I started doing some analysis here by batching together uh, values and then applying an aggregator on it. So this function takes in a data frame, uh, a batch size and an aggregator function. And then it splits the values into set of batches of batch size and then applies the aggregator and comes up with a value for each batch. <coughs> So if I have 1000 uh, you know, accelerometer readings and the batch size is 100, it takes the first 100 values, applies the aggregator, whether it is average, median or standard deviation. And then you know, for that batch of 100, it calculates that aggregate and then adds it to the data frame, to so the output data frame. So the final output data frame contains 
just the aggregate value so in this case for 1000 readings uh, it'll have 10 values in the output data frame I have some code here that uses this function the batch size is 200 and the aggregator I'm using right now is standard deviation so in my head um, standard deviation makes the most sense for our scenario uh, because um, standard deviation is basically the deviation of the values from a median right so um, so if the washer is shaking vigorously then standard deviation the values will vary a lot and standard deviation will be high and conversely if the washer is mostly idle then you know the standard deviation will be low so if i execute this you can see that uh, you know the range of values is very small if you pay attention to the y-axis so yeah so that's this is uh this seems like a good way to kind of aggregate the value so instead of these 7000 data points with the 200 batch size we get around 35 values so we need to transmit only these 35 values over wi-fi to home assistant i've also captured another run of the washer this time it was actually washing some clothes um, and uh, this is what i saw so this was over a longer period of time uh, so initial you see this initial spike here that's when the washer was pulling in water and it was spinning a little bit so that's his initial spike then it goes through this uh, up and down thing where like it washes and waits for a bit and then go continues washing and then you see this big spike here that's when it is in the drying phase so it's actually spinning r quite rapidly and uh, trying to dry the clothes and then it goes for a second cycle and then it is complete so this looks like the right approach that is uh, taking a bunch of values calculating standard deviation and then sending it over to home assistant rather than sending each and every individual reading uh, so it's time to take this logic and implement this in esp home ESP Home has something called as sensor filters. These are filters that you can apply on the output of a sensor value. It has support for quite a few of these different filters, but unfortunately it does not support standard deviation. Uh, but there is this Lambda filter that allows you to write custom code to do any kind of filtering that you need. I wrote up some C++ code here uh, that performs the same logic that we discussed earlier. It takes in uh, a set of sensor values and then computes the standard deviation. Now we need ESP Home to include this code when it compiles the final firmware. Adding this will make sure that the standard deviation.h file is included in the compilation process. Now we need to apply the standard deviation filter to the x-axis values. That's done by including a lambda filter and then within the lambda filter calling the standard deviation for every single x value that comes in. Since we are only interested in the x-axis, we can get rid of the other two axes. Let's compile and upload this code to ESP. If I run the data dump script, as expected, the values only shows up every few seconds.
In the next part of this video, I'll build an automation in Home Assistant to identify when the washer is complete based on data from ESP and then do this. Broadcast from home, laundry is complete. It'll involve building a state machine and some other cool stuff in Home Assistant. So stay tuned for that. Do subscribe to my channel and remember to click the bell icon next to it. That way you will be notified when that video comes out. Thank you for watching and catch you guys on the next one.